heaven and hell. This widely recognized concept offers a clear distinction between reward and punishment. Those who lead righteous lives following God's teachings are granted eternal bliss in a paradise called heaven. Here, they experience joy, peace, and reunion with loved ones. Conversely, hell is a place of eternal suffering reserved for the unrepentant sinners and those who reject God. Images of fire and brimstone are often used to depict the horrors of hell. Gehenna Gehenna is not a direct equivalent to hell. While it can involve temporary suffering, it's understood as a place of purification for the soul before reaching the world to come, a state of spiritual reward. The duration of one's stay in Gehenna is determined by the severity of their transgressions. Gan Eden Imagine the earthly Garden of Eden transformed into a spiritual paradise. This is Gan Eden, the reward for a righteous life. Here, souls experience eternal learning, delight in the presence of God, and a connection to the divine. Rabbinic teachings describe it as a place of indescribable beauty and tranquility. Sheol earlier interpretations of Judaism described Sheol as a neutral underworld, a shadowy realm that housed all souls after death. Unlike heaven or hell, Sheol wasn't a place of reward or punishment. However, some later interpretations depict Sheol as a place of waiting, where souls anticipate the coming of the Messiah and the resurrection of the dead. Nirvana Nirvana is more than just the absence of suffering. It's a state of perfect peace, freedom from ignorance and desire, and liberation from the cycle of rebirth, samsara. Those who achieve nirvana are released from the suffering inherent in the material world and attain a state of perfect understanding and awakening. Moksha Similar to nirvana, moksha is liberation from the cycle of reincarnation and achieving a state of spiritual freedom and self-realization. While nirvana emphasizes the extinguishing of desires, moksha focuses on achieving self-knowledge and realizing one's true essence, which is ultimately one with the divine. Samsara Imagine a hamster wheel of existence. Samsara, the endless cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, is driven by karma, the law of cause and effect. Good deeds in one life lead to favorable rebirths in the next, while bad karma results in suffering in future lives. The ultimate goal in both Hinduism and Buddhism is to break free from this cycle and achieve enlightenment or liberation. Reincarnation The soul's journey doesn't end with physical death. Reincarnation nope. is the belief that the soul is reborn into a new life, influenced by the karma accumulated in past lives. Good karma can lead to a more fortunate rebirth, perhaps as a human again, while bad karma can result in rebirth into a lower form of existence, such as an animal. The ultimate aim is to accumulate enough good karma to achieve liberation from the cycle of rebirth. Ancestral Realm A common thread across many cultures is the belief in an ancestral realm, a separate plane of existence where deceased ancestors reside. These ancestors are not truly gone, but are believed to watch over and influence the lives of their descendants. They may offer guidance, protection, or even warnings in dreams or visions. This belief fosters a strong sense of connection between the living and the dead, and offerings or rituals may be performed to honor them. Ghost World the concept of a ghost world refers to the belief that the spirits of the dead linger in the material world, unable to move on. These ghosts may be restless souls filled with unresolved issues, vengeful spirits seeking retribution, or simply lost and confused. Depending on the culture's traditions, they may interact with the living in various ways, causing disturbances or even possessing the living. Rituals or offerings may be performed to help these spirits find peace and move on to the afterlife. Valhalla If you died a glorious death in battle, Valhalla awaits. This majestic hall is a paradise for Viking warriors. Here they feast on endless boar meat and mead, hone their skills in daily battles, and prepare for Ragnarok, the final war. Imagine a giant hall filled with legendary heroes, forever reveling in the glory of combat. Folkvanger not all Norse afterlife destinations involve fighting. Folkvanger, ruled by the goddess Freya, is a meadow for those chosen by her. Here, warriors and non-warriors alike can find peace and beauty, perhaps a more serene alternative to the boisterous halls of Valhalla. Helheim, not a place of fire and brimstone, but a gloomy underworld ruled by the goddess Hel. This is the destination for those who die of sickness or old age, not in battle. 
Helheim isn't necessarily a place of punishment, but it lacks the grandeur of Valhalla or the beauty of Folkvanger. Duat. The Duat is the vast and perilous underworld the deceased travel through to reach the afterlife. They face challenges, navigate treacherous waterways, and evade monstrous creatures before reaching the Judgment Hall. Aru Aru, the Egyptian paradise, is a land of eternal plenty. Imagine fertile fields bathed in sunlight, where the blessed dead enjoy a life of leisure, abundance, and continued connection to the gods. Shibalba, the Mayan underworld, Shibalba is no walk in the park. It's a dangerous place with nine levels, each filled with unique challenges and trials. The souls of the dead must overcome these obstacles to reach a paradise afterlife. Miklan the Aztecs had a complex underworld with nine underworlds, Miklan. The specific level a soul reached depended on the cause of death. For example, warriors who died in battle went to a celestial paradise, while those who died of natural causes journeyed to a darker underworld. Otherworld Anwen. The Celtic Otherworld is a realm of mystery and enchantment. It's a land of perpetual twilight, inhabited by fairies, mythical creatures, and the souls of the dead. Some believe it exists alongside our world, accessible through hidden portals or in dreams. Bardo. The Bardo is a liminal state between death and rebirth in Tibetan Buddhism. Lasted for 49 days, it's a crucial period where the nature of one's next life is decided. Visions and experiences during the bardo can influence one's future rebirth, so spiritual practices are used to navigate this intermediate state. The Soul World In Kemetic religion, the realm of the dead is presided over by Osiris, the god of the underworld. The deceased undergo a judgment where their heart is weighed against the feather of truth. If deemed worthy, they can enter a blissful afterlife, while those who fail the test face oblivion. Meikai the Shinto underworld, Yomi, is not a place of eternal damnation. It's a shadowy and sometimes nope. dangerous realm where the dead reside. While some translations refer to it as hell, it doesn't carry the same weight of punishment as the concept exists in other religions. Ancestral veneration is important in Shinto, and offerings may be made to appease the spirits of the dead in Meikai. Ahura Mazda's realm, Zoroastrianism offers a clear distinction between good and evil. Perfect. The righteous souls find their reward in the dwelling place of the benevolent god Ahura Mazda, a place of eternal light and happiness. Druzba. For those who lived virtuously, Slavic religion offers Druzba, a paradise for the worthy dead. Imagine a heavenly realm filled with joy, feasting, and merriment, a reward for a life well lived according to Slavic traditions. Ranjanui. The spirit world in Maori mythology Ranjanui is a place of transition. Here, deceased ancestors await their eventual return to the earth. They may influence the living through dreams or visions, and maintaining a connection with these ancestors is important in Maori culture.